free to, to interrupt me. It's not a big problem. I wish we have like dialogue here. So today I will show you what Argo Tools is. I will briefly describe how it is performance, uh, how it integrates uh, with our systems, uh, what you can achieve with those. Uh, also, we will show how we'll show how to work with Argo events. Actually, this is uh, our agenda. Uh, and uh, the last part of those uh, section will be showing real life uh, example of how CI CD uh, can be achieved with uh, Argo events and Argo workflows. And yeah, brief discussion in the end, like what is good, what is bad is uh, with this one. Uh, like already mentioned, uh, this will be a, a bit more, uh, not only theoretical, but actually practical uh, session. We'll show how it's working, how everything has been configured. And yeah, like I mentioned, uh, free to, to ask. So what is Argo workflows? This is the final part of those presentation I have uh, mentioned it like the third part. Uh, so the first one was Argo CD, uh, then was Argo Loss, and right now I'm combining those two because it's very related one to each other, is Argo Events and Argo Workflows. Argo Workflows, what, in general, what is it? It's a pipeline, let's say so, uh, which can be run in Kubernetes. It's actually a Kubernetes of pipelines. Uh, and that's the most uh, strong part of those workflows. So if you have knowledge in Kubernetes, if you have Kubernetes running, that's the strong uh, point for you to use those workflows because it gives you everything that Kubernetes gives you and even a bit more. It is installed using Helm charts. Uh, it's installed as a series, so like extending Kubernetes. And, uh, and yeah, uh, so... That's about workflows. And the next part is Argo events. Uh, I, originally, I was not planning to bring Argo events into this conversation, but it's too uh, tied together, one with each other. Uh, so it, it can be used in separate ways if you want to, but uh, in this case, it's uh, best to use with uh, workflows with events. Uh, and uh, worth to mention Argo CD, like, the CD part uh, is pretty decoupled of all of those family. So Argo Louds can work with Argo CD. Argo CD can integrate and work with uh, workflows, work with events, uh, but it doesn't have uh, native like uh, protocols of communication with each other. So it's completely separate uh, uh, thing. And about events, events is event driven. So uh, we will use events to trigger anything you want inside of Kubernetes is part of reaction for some trigger for some sensor. In other part, uh, we will, in, in this demo, we will use those uh, to uh, run some workflows when uh, users are pushing uh, into GitHub. So like ordinary uh, CI CD. And there you So I guess you can deep dive into this one. So the first part, it will be a, a hello world, uh, the simple one. So it's the start. And uh, here you can see how workflows is look like. It's the bare bone. Uh, so, and from this part, from this template, you will extend and use it uh, as it should be used. Uh, so about this one. So what can we see here? So obviously it's CRG, uh, it's installed. Uh, like I already mentioned, uh, I skipping part with the uh, installation and so on. It's pretty straightforward. You can install those with official Helm charts. So not, not a big deal there. Uh, so after installation, you will uh, have ability to use uh, new uh, CRDs. One of those is workflow. And uh, workflow is consist with like obviously a name. Then you will uh, specify an entry point, which template you should use. And then you're specifying templates. And templates is uh, more like a pod in this case, uh, when you're like defining an image and command and arguments and some resources if you want to. And let's actually uh, deploy those. So uh, here I have uh, some already configured uh, workflows. I think it'd be. Bit more like so. 
Uh, so yeah, there's the same so, uh This is a simple uh, Kubernetes uh, manifest, meaning you are free to apply those directly. And I guess we can actually do it. Uh, so let's install those. As you can see, uh, I have also already running uh, Argo flows and arguments in uh, namespace Argo. And uh, yep, let's go Argo flows examples and let's apply those. Uh, in this case, it will be creation, uh, not apply. Why so? Because we are using generate name. So if I will try to apply those, uh, it will saying that you cannot do it. You should use create because of uh, create of the name. Great. What it do? Uh, let's go into Kubernetes uh, and let's check. It's actually created a pod and executed those pod. Simple as that. But uh, it has actual uh, UI. That's the UI of workflows. I will make it like so. I hope you can see it. As you can see, it is there. Our hello world is here. We can check those logs. Everything is good as it should. Uh, so that's the simple hello world, as you can see, image. Uh, and uh, I'll say hello world. Uh, let's move on and let's extend those simple hello world with some parameters. And parameters is like core principle of workflows. You can extend, you can reuse those uh, templates with parameters. And obviously, um, it's give uh, a lot of agile to your workflows. So that's the how parameters is working. So you're, again, you're specifying your templates. Uh, but this time you're extending your specification with arguments. Uh, yeah, we have arguments and parameters. And we will say that message will be hello world. And here in the bottom of our template, we are like reusing those, like uh, extending, passing those into a container, saying that it will be used input parameter message and message value is hello world. So let's try apply those. You can see the same template. Let's apply. And it is here. Now uh, while it's pending, we can like view our UI, but we can here, uh, we can see here our name, uh, where it's executed, type of those, duration, progress, and uh, in terms of containers, we can see it was like container main, image has been used, and which arguments has been used those. And inside of parameters, new field, we can see that we use our uh, pod, our container, with message, and the message was hello world. And if we will check our logs, it will look like, like so. Again, everything is working. Uh, that's about parameters. Let's dive in a bit more. Now let's have our dependencies. So let's assume we want to have some dependency and if something has been completed, then we execute something else. Uh, as you can see, uh, we can do it. Uh, actually, uh, Argo workflows has two different ways of doing those. Uh, one of uh, is Doug and another one is Steps. I prefer Doug. And actually, it's again uh, terms of preference. They are like doing the same stuff. Uh, and inside of Docker, like we can see here, we have again entry point of the templates. Uh, and here we have that's the a bit uh, more uh, new stuff. So our entry point is main. We can see main uh, here. The uh, main, as again, is a template, but this template is not container. It's doc template, and this doc consists of tasks. And these tasks are using template that are defined uh, uh, above uh, of those stuff. So we will use our task named A. It will use template echo, this one, uh, at the, at the bottom, uh, start of the file. And uh, then we will send those parameters. 
things that message value A. And let's move on. So when task A will be completed, we'll move on to task, task B. It's depend on A. So it will not be started till A will be completed, uh, completely successfully. And uh, yeah, it will say value B. And then we have uh, C. And its dependencies, again, is A, meaning uh, C and B will be run in parallel. That's the most powerful thing of all those workflows, ability to run at scale, to run in parallel. So let's apply those one. I have a bit extended version of the thing I pre presented you. So A, the starting point, B and C will be in parallel, and D will be executed when B and C will be completed. We can here see logs of all of those stuff. A, B, C, and D. Simple as that. I, I assume you believe me, it will be completed. Uh, B. Yep, it has been completed, and uh, you can see it called uh, diamond in this case. So uh, let's move on. About artifacts, and we will use extension of our uh, workflows. And uh, when, as you can saw, as you see previously, uh, one step can be depend, can be run in parallel. Uh, those steps uh, usually share the same information kind of the same information. Uh, to achieve those, uh, we will use artifacts. In this example, uh, previous example was uh, using uh, doc, and this example is using steps. As you can see here, oh, sorry. it's mostly the same. Again, we have entry point, entry point, this one, like uh, artifacts example. Then we have steps. Previously one we had uh, doc, uh, but here is steps. Uh, and uh, the first step will be uh, using just uh, template we will say and the uh, right part of our screen we will we can see those template and the next one after those will be completed we will get our artifacts and we will use those artifacts from the previous step so it will look like uh, we'll say we'll get some uh, some data we will store those data inside of s3 in inside of uh, aws actually uh our workflows uh supports a lot of uh, backend for storage, uh, like uh, Azure, uh, clouds, uh, and everything that uh, can use S3, actually. And then we will uh, store those artifacts, uh, saying uh, cough, say hello world inside of S3, and then we will use those. We will pull those into this new template called print message, and we will get those message. So let's apply those, as you can see here. The same stuff. We'll say print message. One will store our artifacts. Another one will use. So as you can see here, one will output. The other will input. And uh, as you can imagine, uh, at this point, this is looks like functions in uh, programming language. And this function, this one, will saying that you no, know, it wants to have some output of this function. It's uh, assuming you will get some arguments to this one. And this one will some return function. Uh, the thing here is that it's a bit complicated and when you don't work with those uh, like 24 or seven uh, is that you are displaying this in steps. Steps are using templates. And inside of templates, you are like saying the logic, how everything will be glued together. And inside of those, uh, templates uh, here, you will set that which argument will should pass where. So this one, this first step will be generating some output. And this one, so it will be take place, extend this one and generate output. And here, the next one, the consume output, uh, we will think that it expecting some input and he providing this input here. That's the trick part of all of those YAML uh, structure. So 
Usually you will have, when you little try to replicate those one, you will have a lot of bugs trying to understand why it's doing the, this thing in this way. So let's apply those. Sorry, so you basically need to uh, mention two times, like, like yes. the same. Yes, and that's the most annoying part of those workflows. You have like, I don't know, two lines of logic here and a lot of like 20, like 40 lines of YAML. And when you extend those, you will have like thousand lines of YAML uh, describing and describing and describing. And it feels more like, like, you know, YAML was like supposed to uh, replace uh, XML, but it feels like, again, you're coding in XML because you're like continuously describing and describing and describing. Uh, like we apply those one, let's check artifact passing. And here you can see that Argo UI is kind enough uh, to present us of what's happening. So the first one is generating output. Yep. Then we store those artifacts. Yep. And it actually directly from, as you can see, uh, Amazon S3. And then we consume this artifact. I hope you can see there is like a line here, like the arrow saying that this one artifact has been consumed and placed into consume artifact. And here we can see hello world. So it was like readed out of those artifact. Uh, as you can see, uh, default one behavior is to uh, compress those artifacts, but you can uh, manage what to do with this one. Uh, Let's go, let's move on. So this is about artifacts and conditionals. So again, extend all of, of those stuff. We will have ability to set conditions. Like uh, the simple conditions will be a failed or a success or pending or so. Uh, but we can extend those with uh, steps. Uh, so you can like get, uh, generate some output. And uh, based on those output, have some logic inside of this one. To be honest, uh, it's pretty like mm, hard to debug in the end because a lot of YAML will be used. Uh, and uh, my advice here is to do everything you can do inside of single step. Do every heavy logic inside of container, inside of step, and then generate some true-false in the end it will be much easier for anyone dealing with all of those stuff. Let's deep dive into this condition. I can actually, I guess I can show this one. Uh, one moment. Uh, so yeah, let's examine those. So entry point is coin flip. Coin flip is consists of steps. As you can see here, I don't know, I have mentioned, if it's like two dashes, it means it's like a single group of step. So this coin flip will be single step called template and it will be using template called uh, flip coin. Let's assume those template flip coin. What it does, it's using script. Uh, it's like some sweetness from uh, Argo source. So instead of saying that we want to contain that, some image, some source, uh, everything, we, we can define those as script. And uh, the use part of this one is that inside of scripts, you are like easy to produce outputs. Because of this one, you will produce output inside a file, then achieve those with artifact, and then read those artifact. With scripts, you can uh, get it like as a function and get those as the out as output inside of uh, workflows. So what it does, it's a uh, unique Python, random, and uh, like, getting some random uh, one or zero uh, and uh, we'll get cats or tails on those uh, round int. And uh, then that's the first step. Then we will use a next step. This one will be run in parallel. If cats, then we will use template heads. This one saying it was heads. And uh, if it was tails again, Step flip coins result. Uh, this one is everything is Spring templating uh, language uh, like from Go. Uh, so Golang. So if you are familiar with Golang, it will be easy for you. Uh, 
again. Yes, tails. And then one will be another uh, step called flip again. We will use our flip coin again, this one. We'll get another output. And then complex condition. Uh, I guess I cannot, uh, I should not explain everything here. So if it has some tails, it has been combined together and so on and so on. Uh, then we can some output. And we, in this case, we can even have some uh, regex. I guess we can apply those uh, conditions. Does it's it mean then when you run this Python script, this uh, like the, the stage or uh, yeah, this one, when you do the last print, it's catching this last print that you do? Yes, that's the seed part. Uh, actually, that's the single seed part of all of those syntax from Argo, uh, Argo workflows. But yes, in this case, it will catch as the out and use those. Mm -hmm. So again, mm, be sure that you are not over the duty of those print, uh, print in this case. It should be something simple because in other case, you will uh, dive into those complex uh, tails, uh, conditions, sorry. Uh, yep, yep. Stop. Stop. And now we will wait and it will execute everything and we will see how lucky uh, we have. So it was not heads because it was skipped. Heads are related holes. Uh, now it will flip again. And you'll see how it turned out. L regex complex condition. So this one is the single block. Tail heads. And in the end, it was tails. Tails. The, the conditions is, you know, the, those parts when you're like easy to, to see one time when you're explaining. Uh, so let's move on. And conditions, we will move. Sorry, I think missed one. Okay, um, somehow missed one, uh, one slide. Uh, we have ability to run loops inside of yeah. uh, Loops will be running uh, with item and with items. Actually, I'm pretty familiar with uh, Ansible and so it's pretty similar with Ansible. Uh, I guess you can guess what is happening here. It will run uh, two times. Uh, those steps and you, for first time it will be hello world, another one will be uh, goodbye world. So let's condition loop. loop, loop. So. And it will run parallel. You can observe logs for single or observe logs from everything. Like all logs. ArcUI is not very user friendly in terms of logs, as you can see sometimes. Uh, it has been work. Now we will observe our more complex condition. We, we can, like this one was, uh, this one was uh, iterating over list of items. Now we have dict or map, what it's called. As you can see, it will run. Uh, it will run what get uh, OS release on different uh, images, image, image tag, and tag. Uh, so let's apply those. Simple as that. Uh, we have like four images. As you can imagine, it's pretty useful for CI part, and I can. Actually, show you the I part. Uh, here we have some uh, Golang, and we are like using those Golang, uh, as you can see here. So yeah, let's examine this one. It has been completed, and you can see like it was Ubuntu. And this one is Alpine, I believe. Yes, and so on, and so on. Now let's examine those one. Those example for CI. It's more real life example. Uh, here we have some uh, 
let's assume entry point C CI example. Entry point CI example consists of steps, this step and this step, two steps in general. First one is building. Uh, what is building? Okay, it's using uh, Golang, it's using inputs, and it inputs it consuming artifacts. And in this case, artifact will be not S3, but Git. In this case, it will be a Git repo from Golang revision, this one. So this one is pulling some Golang examples directly from uh, Golang Git. And uh, we will use those, we will build those, and then we will run those. Our run, it will be used Debian, Alpine, and Ubuntu. And all of those will uh, run Hello World example. Let's apply those. This one will be a bit more heavy because we are like pulling some data. Uh, I actually have one more example here called Influx, as I understand Influx is using this one. And it's pretty heavy. As you can see here, uh, it's like we are building those, we are like unit tests, coverage, then end-to-end -end testing. But this one I cannot run on my local because it's too powerful. I don't know how much does it take in terms of space, but it's consuming. As you can see here, it is working. Again, I'm showing right now, focusing everything in UI, but it's single pods. As you can see here, it's actually a pod. If you, if you will check those pods, it's taking something inside of those. Uh, so this one, the main pod, it will be executing the logic. In it will propagate anything needed and wait, obviously will wait. And yeah, this one and this one. So everything is a pod. That's the neat part of workflows. And again, it has been completed. And the most actual, for my opinion, powerful part of all workflows, it has the ability to create not only pods, but actual Kubernetes resources, because we are already inside Kubernetes resources. So let's assume this one. So this one will uh, able to generate uh, for us some cron drop. As you can see here, we will use some resource. We will use action create. It has some dependency like uh, con conditions uh, optional. Uh, so if this drop will fail, then our uh, workflow will fail. And this one, this drop, uh, it's doing uh, first uh, 2000 uh, Numbers of pi in this case. So let's apply those one. Which uh, one? This one. Spoiler alert! It will fail, but I will show you how it failed. It failed. As you can see here, user default. Now we are extending everything with in Kubernetes. This user I was like using was not able to create this one, this uh, job. Why so? Just because we don't uh, specify anything, like we don't specify service account that will be used to create those job. Uh, you specify this one, you will set service account name, and then you will have your airbag. Uh, so Argo Close Admin. As you can imagine, let's check roles. This role, this role. Events that, but a bit ignore this one. So I have service account. Uh, this service account, it was service account hardware close admin. And I extend those with some cluster roles. And uh, I allowing this uh, hardware close admin to create actual jobs. And uh, I'll cluster binding those together. So let's reapply those one, but this one will be using our service account. So again, difference here. It's using the default one. This one is using the propagated one, the one we selected. Service account name. Delete. And let's watch. I actually can again check inside of. As you can see here, this one and this one. So it was able to, first one, this one, it failed. 
because of lack of permissions. User is forbidden. This one is drop. It was able to create those one, and we can see drop. Let's check drop. This one again, and this drop obviously is a uh, pod, and it was uh, like showing us two thousand numbers of pi. And because it was successful drop, we have successful workflow. As you can imagine, you can pretty extend Kubernetes with all of those stuff. Now you have ability to create resources programmatically with some events and so on. I will show it later. Usually, I, in my opinion, I use those to generate some secrets or temporal secrets or something like this one, the, the resources that need to be used by this job which in the end of the job execution can be removed. Uh, so let's move on. Argo events. Maybe someone has some more questions about workflows. I will deep dive in the, in the end of our session how CICD works, but maybe right now anyone has something. Uh, if not, let's move on into Argo events. So Argo events, originally I wasn't planning to talk about this one, but again, it's two coupled together. What it's doing, basically it's waiting for some, something to happen. In our case, it will be web hooks. And uh, when those web hooks get some data, we can check those data, validate those if it is our data, if we want to use those ones so on. And then we can create some actions. In our case, we will create uh, some workflows. This one, the general um, structure, general architecture, how workflows are working. As you can see here, it's like using some bus. I will be using nuts in this case, but it can be in huge scales. Uh, they recommend to use Kafka, but in general, everything that can like uh, be uh, queried can be used. Uh, then we will have some uh, new resources. Previously, we saw our workflows in CRD. Now we will use and investigate what is event bus, uh, what event source, and what sensor is. So event bus, simple one. We will create some event bus inside of our namespace. And uh, actually, I will show you how it looks like. Mm, one moment. So Argo. I'm sorry, I'm Argo. CD, I have class. As you can see here, I have like three pods, like mentioned in here with replicas. So they are like, uh, yeah, like blocker files in this case, simple one. Uh, event source, a bit more complicated one. Event source in this example is GitHub, but, but as you can see in this slide, it has ability to like to create sources for a lot of resources. Uh, so in this case, we will use a GitHub. What this one will do. Uh, so in this example, we will expose our service. We will expose our web hooks uh, outside of our Kubernetes. It will be like uh, using this port. And uh, yeah, and then we are like using uh, GitHub. We will uh, have GitHub. You obviously need to have some permissions, uh, have some case added. Uh, and uh, you are saying that, you know, uh, please create uh, event source for our this, this owner and this repository. Uh, it also can be uh, organization. So you will create a hook for whole organization. And then you are saying that you are creating some web hook in this uh, port and this method. And this one URL will be used to get those data. Uh, let me show you actual real life example. Uh, this one, this one. Mm, oops, system and plates. So this event bus, simple one, uh, and source, GitHub source. Then we will use our organization. Then we are saying that we are like creating some pool in this one. This will create a service. We are like already provisioned those with uh, token, and we will wait for everything that will appears on this webhook. Then we obviously need to create ingress. And this ingress 
will lead us into this webhook, which will lead us into our actions. Uh, yeah, something like, like this one. It's a bit, it's not complicated, but a bit tricky. The neat part here, the, the tasteful part here, when you have ability to have like, uh, why do we actually need this one, these tokens? Because this controller will allow us to create uh, webhooks uh, automatically inside of uh, GitHub. You don't need to go to every repo and create a webhook here, there. You actually can like have those uh, tokens with the ability to create those webhooks and then you'll like saying that this, uh, for this organization, for this repository and so on, so on, please add this and this and this webhooks. Um, this is the event source. I promise it will be a bit more easy a bit later when I will show how it's working. Right now, it's, I believe it's complicated. Uh, why do we actually need all of those stuff? Sensor. Sensor is listening for event source. As you can see here, I'm combining the previous one, GitHub, for example. Uh, and it's filtering our some, some data. In this case, uh, that's the hard part of uh, Argo events. It doesn't allow, like, doesn't add you anything like Jenkins, for, for example, will add when you have like plugin and you will have some couple of uh, check marks or so. No, here we have raw uh, webhook and this webhook obviously will have some headers and some uh, JSON body, like payload. Then we are like parsing those manually annoying part with filters. In this case, we will parse our headers with, it will, should uh, be pull request. The body of all those uh, webhook will be uh, continuing some action and it can be opened, edited, reopened, one of those one. Uh, pull request state should be opened and uh, which base ref should be master. Meaning this sensor will listen for anything for any event for any pull request opened against master. Let me show you a real life example. Uh, ingress, uh, oh yeah, real life example. It will be a bit more helping. Uh, so, manage PR. The service account we want to use to get all those stuff, the thing I was previously mentioned, that we are like we are like waiting for some event source. The the one this one. This event source against this organization. And uh, if it is open pull request, then we will do some actions. Let's move on to actually demonstrate you what actions can it do. Uh, to glue well, everything together, it using some triggers. As you can see here, triggers can be uh, a lot of stuff, <laughs> uh, but we will use uh, workflows in this demo. Again, okay. here we will check how it looks like. So if this sensor has been triggered, all of those filters have been completed, it's open pull request for our organization against some defined branches, it will create new resource, it will create new workflow. And this workflow, uh, let's let's just check how it's working. Uh, so it will have some templates, has some parameters, has some dog in it, and so on, so on. And that's the again beauty and the ugly part of all of those events. For example, we have this pull request against some of the branches. And this pull request will be generated by a webhook. Then we parse those webhook. And when we are parsing those webhook, like some input body, uh, repo owner login, so on and so on, we can rewrite all of our parameters with uh, data from those webhook. It's again, like I mentioned, it's the beauty because you have ability to do wherever you want, but it's the hard part because it's hard to develop, hard to debug. And uh, as you can see, it's a bit of annoying, uh, especially after Jenkins is all of those multi-branching strategies, uh, GitHub organization and so on. It's pretty low level. 
so in this case, for example, repo owner, we are parsing repository owner login and specifying this one inside of back the, the top, we will overwrite our stack arguments parameter, first parameter, zero, zero parameter value. This one, the parameters of workflows. Again, it will create workflow with parameters. This parameter doesn't have value, but we are extending this one with overrides below. So repo owner. And uh, this one is true for repo name, URL, uh, PR number, and so on and so on. So, yeah, that's the part part of, of those stuff. And I already showed you a little bit of CICD, how it's working. Let's examine how it's working. So, uh, I have Argo CD. Argo CD has been deploying some applications. Uh, one of those applications, in our case, one moment, I will show you. Uh, this one is like system dependencies, uh, like small mention from my side, event source. This one will create uh, webhooks uh, inside of uh, GitHub. When you will have this one inside of your application, uh, just be aware that don't spam with webhook creation because I get bond uh, inside of GitHub. So place it inside of a separate Argo application. Uh, as you can see here, things. And if you don't need to touch anything here, you have configured this one, leave it running. Same true, for example, for Let's Encrypt and Cert Manager. Don't spam with like reopening uh, certs uh, for your for ingress. So this one is separated. And then we will have our applications. And this application is creating this sensor. So uh, event source has been created. You know what? I will show you actually how it looks like. Uh, things. Uh, oh, sorry, webhook. Yeah, this webhook. One moment. Uh, this is the payload, so you can check how it looks like. And uh, we have Argo application, meaning this is here on templates, meaning I don't need to rewrite everything for every application I have. We have sensor, like I previously mentioned, and let's examine what workflow is looking like. So sensor will be triggered on open pull request. Uh, generate name, entry point, main. Let's check main entry point. Main entry point is expecting some parameters, which we are like presuming with the overrides. Then this one, uh, it's using dog, and inside of dog, you're like first one. We will use uh, status pending, meaning uh, on uh, pull uh, on the pull request we will change uh, status of our commit. Then we will build image. Then we will, if unsuccess, we will use uh, update those uh, status with the success. And uh, in the end of this one, on exit, it has some directory called our exit. We will send some notification. Uh, it's already uh, looking not so good, to be honest. Uh, it's hard to debug, uh, but it uh, will, was even harder uh, if it everything has been uh, baked in, inside of here. So I'm talking about logic. As you can see here, it's using them, templates. And templates has been like developed separately. Let's template GitHub status. So uh, the thing I was not like mentioning previously, uh, you can define your workflows and you can send workflows with workflow templates. Uh, it's the common uh, like repeating uh, tasks that you can st separate, st store separately and uh, reuse those with some parameters. So in this case, let's examine. 
it will use status pending template reference github status github status this one we will use template main entry point template main yep and we will populate some parameters like name uh, of the application will be uh, argo events description running test repository will be getting from those overrides uh, commit sha will be getting from overrides and status will be pending those GitHub uh, status is actually just a uh, CRL with some permissions that will, uh, using those data, will change status of the uh, of the commit. Then we will use our built image. In built image is using Kaniko. It's the uh, Kaniko for anyone uh, doesn't know. Uh, it's the ability to build containers without uh, needed to like, you know, to build Docker inside of Docker with permissions. It's like we have ability to run and build containers like in Kubernetes. It's using some again parameters. We apply those parameters here, and uh, yeah, the executor of the container. So let's actually develop something. Uh, this hook has been installed inside of whole organization, meaning this hook will be triggered for everything inside of our organizations for every repo. Let's check uh, backend, for example. Uh, sorry. Backend, example readme. Uh, let's switch branch to the stage. Create new branch, create demo. Uh, here we will update our readme. We will push those readme. We will go into our repositories. Backend. Mm, yep. Then we will run uh, against our branch page. And let's create pull request. And if we will go into Kubernetes, yep. Webhook has been triggered. And it right now executing uh, all of those stuff like I pre mentioned previously. Uh, luckily, uh, those UI of close has integrated uh, support for Argo events. So we can see our event sources, we can have our sensors, and so on and so on. And the event flow is a thing that are gluing everything together. So we have one event source called uh, all events. Then we have different sensors all subscribed onto this one, but with different overrides. So this one, uh, backend is like uh, visiting everything from backend repository. And uh, as you can see, it's like the first step of, uh, sorry, this one, this one. And right now it's like executing all of those logic I showed you previously. All of uh, logic I was meaning. Uh, uh, there. Uh, this one. Again, it's not an easy topic. And in the end, I will say like proof, cons, pros and cons all about this one. So, but it's working. Uh, and it has ability to run inside of Kubernetes. And the most powerful thing here Scaling, audit, logging, monitoring, everything need part with Kubernetes you have, you have here. It's building our image using Kanika. And uh, when will be, image will be built, it will be auto pushed inside of our uh, inside of our repository. Uh, here it's like, as you can see here, uh, status has been changed. Ending. Uh, to be honest, it can should be actually extended with uh, some unit tests that are running in parallel. In this case, it's pretty uh, simple project, so I'm just checking if the image can build or not. Uh, so, a couple of uh, seconds need to be done to build the image, and this status will be changed. Yep, it has been changed. 
that image has been built. This one has been built. And uh, the last part, and, uh, uh, it's sending some notifications into this service called NTFI, NTFI whatever. Uh, and saying that build has been completed. Now we can merge. Another uh, another template will be used in this case. It will be merged. Uh, as you can see here, the filters are a bit different. It's like full against all our main branches. And uh, here, we, to be honest, we'll do mostly the same, but with uh, one major uh, change. Uh, after build image, it will use deploy image. What it will do, it will, uh, using some uh, GitHub uh, case, will auto commit inside of our application, meaning like, no, well, I will just show uh, our merge into stage. And if we can change, yep, it has been updated backend. Uh, H commit is like pending. Right now it will rebuild the image. And after this one, after the image has been built, it will auto commit inside of infra repository. And it will change uh, this, this file. This tag and tag will be, uh, as you can see here, tag will be our short sha where uh, commit uh, ID. So, yep, that's the how it is working. Uh, it was nightmare, to be honest, to the bug. So, it will be uh, executing, uh, and uh, in the end, I will show the results. Uh, so, Let's let's start with positive case. Uh, here is Kubernetes native, meaning everything you have already Kubernetes, every policy, every airbag, every security, monitoring, logging, so on, so on, uh, scaling uh, is there. Uh, flexibility, again, you are free to do whatever you want with this one because it's pretty low level. Uh, customization, again, yeah, the same thing. And GitHub. GitOps support, yes, uh, because as you can see previously, it's uh, using like uh, plain Kubernetes uh, manifests. You can extend those with Helm, uh, Helm templates. And you can store those inside of GitHub. And if you can use Argo CD to deploy all of those stuff. Uh, event driving, like I previously showed you, uh, scalability, because scaling of uh, Kubernetes itself and ability to run a lot of stuff in parallel um, user interface, pretty minimal, but uh, it's enough to understand what is happening. Uh, you can create complex workflows, and to be honest, yes, this one is the most powerful thing of workflows. It's not CI/CD tool, to be honest. Uh, it's uh, more about uh, workflows, and usually people are using those for machine learning, for data analysis, and so on and so on, for processing a lot, a lot of data. And it's where it's shining because you can bring everything, you can build anything uh, and uh, run at scale. Uh, and yeah, integration with Git, same with Git Uh Cons, it's as you can uh, see, I hope you can understand uh, through this demo. It's not very complex to be honest, but it consists of a lot of simple uh, parts that are need to be right in the place to actually work in. Uh, it's hard to debug and hard to troubleshoot. For example, I can show this one. This I spent yesterday, I don't know how many time, like a few hours trying to uh, to work on this one. So uh, GitHub webhook is returning not branch name, but uh, refs, heads, and then branch name. So you need to split this one. I'm not uh, good, very good at those Spring language. And it was a bit struggle to me to understand what is wrong here. And uh, as you can see here, like this uh, YAML file consists of like, 200 YAML files. But error message was saying that you have error in uh, line number 600, wherever, wherever, which is misleading. Uh, and it was like, uh, some of your parameters is wrong. Which one? I don't know. 
you you to to debug. Uh, dependency as Kubernetes, like uh, like a plus, like a minus here. Limited support uh, and uh, same as last maker. So it's hard to find uh, good answers with your issues. Uh, so like you are like alone in the field. Uh, requires YAML knowledge. Like the previously mentioned, you have like three or like ten lines of logic there, and the tons and tons of describing. Uh, lack of certain features. Yes, you don't have some pretty stuff like Jenkins with all of those plugins and so on. But again, for someone, it can be uh, the good thing. It's not like blown out with a lot of stuff. Uh, documentation in documentation actually it as I can show. It has a lot of examples, like a lot, a lot, a lot for events, a lot this one, and for event bus, not many sensors, yes, sensors for uh, events. And if you will observe uh, workflows itself, it has a lot, a lot, a lot to, to check. Uh, documentation is straightforward, but it's answering the most basic stuff. And when you have like some issues, you are on your own. But uh, to be honest, they have uh, active uh, community. Uh, you can, and it helped me a few times, you can go inside of our Slack, their Slack, and ask questions directly. And usually we'll have some answers. Uh, and yeah, like I mentioned, troubleshooting is a bit of nightmare. It's not saying anything useful. And uh, just to prove that it was Successful image as built. And if you will go onto our repo infra, and this bot has been updated, this image with this tag A is working. So, yeah, that's it about Argo events, Argo source.